The subject of aviation is as vast as medical science. How it developed, though, from this to this in just 100 years is unprecedented. Today, space flights border on being commonplace. We've got planes flying without anyone on them. We've got delivery drones knocking doors and the air cars. Simply, nothing has come this far that fast. Airplanes fly because they have wings and because the shape of those wings turn the air in a manner that produce lift. For the basics, Mr. Bernoulli, a Swiss physicist, found out that given constant temperature, static and dynamic pressure will always maintain a constant total. If the dynamic pressure of, say, a parcel of air or fluid increases, its static pressure or potential energy would drop. On the other hand, dynamic pressure must decrease if the static pressure increases. Pressure that would be exerted if the fluid in motion were brought to a sudden stop by a dam or a barrier is called the dynamic pressure, whereas the static pressure is an all-time present force exerted by gas or fluid on a body in which it is contained. Now let us take this to the real world and see what that means. An airfoil is a wing cross-section that splits air into two portions, one that flows on top and the other beneath as it moves forward against the wind. Because of the distinctly curved shape at the top of the airfoil, air picks up speed and follows the curvature until a certain point. And because the total energy of airstream is constant, this increase in velocity or the dynamic pressure will also cause a corresponding decrease in the static pressure on top of the airfoil. Meanwhile, pressure at the bottom surface of the wing also decreases but remains much higher than the upper wing form and thus creates a net force in the upward direction and makes the surface fly. What further aids flight is that the pressure just around the airfoil remains much lower than its surroundings, making the airfoil take to perpetual effort to find comparable atmosphere above until the pilot action disturbs the situation. A theory about lift also brings Newton's third law of motion into the game. It says as the air flows along the upper airfoil surface, it speeds up and leaves the curvature in a downward direction, which according to the equal and opposite reaction theory, kicks the airfoil surface back in the air. Whatever theory wins, one thing is assured, that the shape of the airfoil and its orientation to the relative wind determines the kind of lift that will be produced which continues to generate until a critical angle of attack is reached beyond which the air can no longer follow the upper curvature, hence giving rise to pressure and causing airflow separation. So how do these airfoils shape? These days? Computers. But that is not how it started. The National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics developed a series of airfoils in 1932 called the NACA series that described the shape of an airfoil by numbers. For example, the 4 Series NACA 4415 described the airfoil shape as 4% camber located at 4 tenths cord from the leading edge, having a maximum thickness of 15%. Series 5 that came around 1935 required a bit of math to do, but they too shaped and described the airfoil in somewhat similar manner. And then we had the NACA 1 or the 16 series during 1939 that were based on theoretical considerations and saw extensive use in marine and aviation propeller designs. The NACA 6 series were designed to achieve least drag and most lift, and then the series gave way, at least in part, to specialized airfoils designed for specific purposes by computers. It has been said that given enough thrust, even a barn door can be made to fly. Actually, this statement is not far from wrong. Almost any flat surface will generate lift, but as things reshape, they get more exciting. Take a closer look next time you are around an airplane or even a rotorcraft and notice the distinct shape of the airfoil on the main wing. Let us see if you can tell the kind of lift that surface will produce and what speeds and motion they will make the aircraft capable of. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to aircraft flight controls theory of flight. In this session, we're going to learn about how an airfoil section gain lift and how an aircraft fly. In order for you, the student or the viewer, to understand this subject, you must memorize and understand the motion laws of physics. Newton's first, second, and third law, and Bernoulli's principle. Bernoulli's principle states that 
accelerating fluids create low pressure area and fluid here is referring to the air the air here is considered as a fluid what they talking about is that whenever air accelerates its speed the pressure will drop the design the design of the airfoil section is a copy of the bird wing mr daniel bernoulli and Newton have solved the mystery of what will happen to the bird as it spread its wing and start flying. Once the air hits the front of the wing, it will split into two portions, one on top and the other one goes in the bottom. The top side, as you see here, has a camber, a contour, and the slope at the end. This will lead to the faster movement of air than the lower portion. And that's where the reduction in pressure will happen. The surrounding pressure, the surrounding pressure, remember we are living in an enclosure on planet Earth, surrounded by continu continuous pressure in the atmosphere, so, whenever there is a differential, the surrounding pressure will try to compensate the differential and this will lead into the movement of the airfoil section gaining lift, therefore the aircraft will fly. To understand this from our daily life and nature, we can find the same action, reaction being happening Every day when you are driving your car on the highway next to a speeding vehicle or truck, especially if it's a big truck, you will notice that your car will move once you get closer to the speeding truck. The reason for your car movement is the accelerating vehicle in front of you has accelerated the air. And now comes Bernoulli's principle, accelerating fluids will create low pressure area. This truck or vehicle has created a low pressure area. The surrounding pressure try to compensate for the differential, your car in the middle, so your car will also move due to that effect. And this also uh, uh, coincide with Newton's third law action reaction. We can see here the wing design as we talked earlier, similar to the bird wing, flat in the bottom, camber, contour, and the slope at the end. The same thing goes for flight controls. So once the aircraft gain lift and start flying, flight controls will control the direction of the aircraft, whether it's gonna go up, down, left, or right. The point to mention here is that all flight controls are designed in the same manner, in the same shape, camber, flat at the bottom, and contour on top, leading to a slope. You can see the elevator has the same design to gain the same effect. Rudder, horizontal stab, vertical stab, all of them have the same shape and the same design in order to gain lift by the phenomena that air has, and it's a, it's a characteristic of air to act this way. Once air speed reach a certain limit, lift will be gained. Please review your book and visit the aircraft hangar to check all the flight controls and notice that all of them are designed in the same way. Flat in the bottom, camber, contour, and the slope at the end. Raise questions to your instructor 
And this concludes our session on aircraft flight controls, theory of flight, how the airfoil section and the aircraft fly. Thank you for watching. They say you haven't seen a tree until you have seen its shadow from the sky. An airplane will tell you that it is not about what you know or do every day, but what you don't, and that your world is the most beautiful place. Learn well, live good.